I've got myself some lunch. I got some salad and tuna. And while I have that, I thought I'm going to sit here and it's been a long time since we've sat down and had an update on my health journey with cancer. So I thought this is the perfect opportunity to sit down and have a little talk. If you have followed along for a while now, you know that not only am I a mum of 16 children, that I am also a two times cancer survivor. It's time for me to go back and have another round of testing done and a follow-up appointment with my specialist. But let's go back and I'll give you the quick rundown of the story. If you would like to hear all the story of what has happened over these last few years, um, you can go to our playlist and it's under health and you can watch all the videos right through. Be aware that there are some tough moments in amongst those videos um, if you are watching them. The quick story for those who don't know it is that after I had my last baby, I developed a cough and for, a, for quite some time I went back and forth from the doctors. At one point I said to my doctor, can I go to a specialist and see what's going on? I was referred on to an ear, nose, throat doctor and throughout the testing uh, to search for the cough, we actually discovered a lump in my throat. They did a biopsy. I was immediately put in for surgery to remove my thyroid. That was a difficult recovery when you've got a family, especially when you've got a really big family. Recovering from anything is, is difficult because you're used to being on board and getting in there and getting things done. And when you can't, it's really hard to step back and let other people do the work while you recover. So I lost most of my voice at the time. I had to have speech therapy. I was on complete vocal rest at one point. But we all came together as a family and we got through that. Now the type of cancer that that was requires 15 years worth of checkups afterwards. It's one that can come back. So we're constantly doing blood tests and scans to make sure that that doesn't happen. And if it does, that we can catch it early because catching cancers early is how we can get in there and get them treated so that we have good outcomes. Now, while we were checking for that cancer, during all those tests, we actually discovered other lumps that I had that the doctors just keep an eye on. And I don't know why this particular time, I just felt a bit of a, a push, a bit of a nudge to, to say, look, you know, I'm going in for all these scans. Should we check on these other ones? Because it's been a while. And the doctor went, yep, that's great. Yep, we'll do it all in one go. So I had um, a larger scan done. And what started off as a small appointment turned into a couple of hours worth of testing. And then the waiting began. And, and I think that that's the hardest part is the waiting to get the results to find out what's going on so that you know what you're either facing or what can be done about it. It wasn't long after I had those tests done that I walked into my doctor's office and sat down to be told, well, it looks like you've got renal cancer and we need to make a plan. But I had to go out of town. I went down to Brisbane to a fantastic specialist down there and he did the surgery. With the advice of the doctors, we decided that we were going to attempt to remove the tumor of the kidney. If it didn't go well, of course, I would still lose the kidney, but we were going to do this open surgery, which involved a huge um, incision. So it was a very difficult recovery after that surgery. I have been through a lot. I've, look, I've, I've birthed a lot of babies. I've had a few surgeries in my time. And by far, this was one of the most painful times of my life. Spent a couple of weeks down um, in Brisbane. But we got home and I must say, like, everyone just rallied together and looked after me. I just felt so cared for and so loved. We got through that recovery and then it was into waiting out the times in between to get the testing done to make sure everything is fine. And I couldn't get through my health journey without my faith. My faith is what got me from diagnosis to surgery, from surgery to recovery, from recovery 
to checkups to checkups to now it's time to do some testing so I have been out I have had all of my blood tests done and I have had a CT scan done with the dye contrast I just wanted to say if if you are going through cancer or if you are supporting somebody who is going through cancer can I just send you the biggest hug um, know that I am thinking of you and I am praying for you you know cancer just affects so many people and I would say that if you're in a position where you can donate some money to a local cancer charity that would be good because they help support the people around the patient they also help the patient and they put the funds into research as well so find your local registered cancer charity and be generous if you can and help out because it's just it it touches everybody it doesn't discriminate between genders age class race anything it just it affects everyone so let's all get involved and see if we can work our way towards a cancer-free world wouldn't that be just absolutely amazing if you are in that position and you want specific prayers please just like in the comments below you could just put the person's first name and just put prayers required for as a community we can sort of spend some time each day just praying for blessings and recovery and strength for that person so I would appreciate it if you did that because I have appreciated all of your prayers I know that there are folks out there that are still praying that I have continued good health so let's do that together. Ray is going to drive me down to my appointment, so come with us for that. And when we get home, I'll let you know all the results on how I got on. over to get some food I kind of forgot to have breakfast did you have breakfast no no see so hungry we're just gonna have a quick bite to eat and then get to the appointment on time cool where we go what do we got here
So we're at the hospital and Ray's just going to drop me off because again, we cannot find a park anywhere. So you're going to go and find a park. We're actually going to meet up with your mum here as well. She's yep. going to have a little quick visit with us while we're down here in Brisbane. So I'm going to go in and see if I can find her. again from Brisbane and we got some really good news. Yes, Jen's kidney cancer is all gone. It's <laughs> all gone. So that's a relief. It's been three years. It's been quite the journey and um, it's just great to go down there and get the all clear. So my blood tests were really good. My kidneys are functioning perfectly. The scans were also clear so you can obviously see where I've had the surgery done and had the tumour removed and also I still have a cyst in my right kidney but he said nothing to be concerned about. For the kidney cancer and the surgery that I went through three years ago we are basically done and dusted. He said that cancer is cured. So that's fantastic. I'm very excited about that. From here on out I just have to have um, a scan done every every three three, three three to five years yeah as a precautionary measure yep i'm so grateful for everyone's prayers and your thoughts along the way you've you've walked this journey with me and we really appreciate that 
and you're going to be around me for a little bit longer yet. Yes. <laughs> so thanks everyone for coming along on my appointment today. I'm so happy to be able to share that news with you and we will see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. God bless. Goodbye.